So for a lot of the chapter programs, you're running events. And then, hey, this thing called the pandemic, and so now everyone's doing like virtual events, right? So depending on the scale of your chapter program, it could be kind of small or it could be enterprise. Look at like what Duolingo does, where they just have thousands of chapters and, and members are pretty much running it. So you're going to have different governance kind of levels of either like chapter leads running it or like staff assisting. And so there's so many different models there. So I'm not going to get into the weeds of that. But one of the things that we kind of run into as, as a challenge on, on running events is we're kind of gated to the tool we can use, right? And what we have in the budget, right? So not everybody can afford Zoom licenses. That's why Derek Anderson originally started Bevy, right? So in the startup grind, they had like 800 chapters. You can't really afford like 800 Zoom licenses and, and those type of deals. And so when you're running different events, you know, you've got all the team, or sorry, all these different tools from, from Zoom to, to Bevy and all these other great things, right? And then for chapter leads, sometimes you want, you have these big events and you want really nice, shiny bells and whistles. And so you've got different tools out there like the OBS and all these things, right? But then the problem with a lot of these tools is that you're having to download software. So then suddenly like you're working with a speaker, presenter, guest, chapter leader, trying to get the software installed, right? So that was like, okay, so that's, that was a nightmare. So when I'm working with different chapters and people, you know, basically I was looking for a software that A, was easy to use, browser-based, no software to install, B, really shiny. So when we ran really big events, so if I'm Elijah or Juan, I got a really big event. I've just got Elon Musk like on. I may not want to do like the kind of the run of the mill type of event, right? And also it's something that's going to be like scalable, right? So if we've got chapters, we need something that's going to be easy, something for people to onboard people with and they can be operational with because you don't want to get pinged like every time someone has an issue. And even uh, Zoom a year later, people are still having to rely on IT and other stuff for that. So the tool that I came up with is a tool called uh, Restream.io. And I'll just quickly show that. Tire screen, sorry. Ah, I should know that'd be better. But whoa. So you can see that. That looks okay. Right. So with, with Restream.io, basically, so what you're going to kind of look at from a business perspective is their professional package. This isn't like a software plug for them, but really, so you get the white label um, type type deal, right? And so for, for it, what I'm essentially looking at is for the bigger events, and there's a couple of different ways to do this. You can integrate this in with Zoom and other types of, of things, or basically for me, just working with kind of at, at a big at a, at a level for the big events. And then with any, anyone that's essentially a chapter lead, they can come in and, and basically set up their own shows. And so you're kind of gated here that you've got one admin for your account. If you're going to get enterprise, you might different level because then at that scale is like you might want a license of restream for North America versus like Israel versus like Asia versus like Europe, right? And so when you're going into the event thing, the thing I kind of glanced over is like generally, like if you've got a TV station and you're doing programming, you, you know, it's basically you're trying to fill that up. And the same thing with the chapter lead. So if you just had like one account and say you've got chapter teams in Italy and France, but you've only got one license and, and the sort of you don't want people like conflicting with, you know, the different times and everyone trying to use the same thing. Right. So you can easily segment it out. Um, for it. So it runs about 50 bucks if you if you need like separating out different types of admin accounts, right? So you've got like different instances that could essentially be like their own TV channels, if that makes sense. And then within using this, it's, it's basically going to be live stream browser based. And I can stream this to any social media channel where, where I have an account. LinkedIn Live is like really the only one. It's a little bit of a um, chore at this point to get up and going. But essentially, I just come in and, and create an event. And as we see, like with one here, I've got the, the, the link or sorry, the YouTube link where I can go grab it. And I've got like Facebook, Twitter and Twitch integrated in. And when I come into the studio, just to quickly show kind of the, the simplicity of this. So you're basically taking a source video like, say, a Zoom is and then through this, it's coming through here and then going to multiple live streaming services. Yeah, so you get to pick. So like in this case, I'll get to, I will turn off my video, so it's still a bit too confusing. But uh, essentially here, so like, you know, which channels do I want to broadcast on? So sometimes I'll see a brand or like a chapter only dedicate to Twitch. It really is going to depend on the region. But the good thing is you can do multi-channel. 
So instead of just some teams only broadcasting to Twitch, the same 10 people, it's like, hey, if you've got like 500 followers on Twitter, 1,000 followers on Facebook, whatever your case is, or you know, 3,000 on YouTube, blast it out to all of them. And then the beauty of that is once it's out there, it auto archives, right? So then the only work that you're gonna do after the fact is if you wanna slice and dice it down into individual segments, right? Um, so you're just gonna, you know, so with the basic package that I have today, it's, it's really just gonna be out like one instance per channel. There's other ones that have like multiple Facebook pages, multiple YouTube channels, all that stuff. You're gonna have to go to uh, larger options. But the beauty of this is just, you know, for the bigger events where you really want, so if I'm wanting Columbia and I want to do something nice for the chapter, I can easily go in here, create an event and set that up. And then I basically, I'll walk through a couple of the features here. In the admin area, you can have up to 10 people, up to 10 speakers. And then you give the speakers this nice little link and they can come in through their browser and immediately as they come on, you can maximize their screen, turn them on, mute them, all that great stuff a private chat over here and so in the private chat it's just the speaker chat because how many times like if we're like all live with our speakers now and we've got some inside baseball stuff like stuff here like hey Juan your video's not playing or stuff you don't want like everybody on the screen to know about so you get like a private uh, chat area there the next things that you have really quickly on this is like how do you actually want to show people on here so you get like from cinema mode to different ways you can slice and dice basically looking at the screen the other thing, you know, really quickly going through this is the chat segments and basically aggregates the chat from all the channels that you're sharing to, right? I've seen some teams have one person deployed on Facebook, one person deployed on Twitter, one person to deploy on YouTube, and it really becomes a cluster and a mess. So what Restream I'm does, team, right? yeah, so what Restream does, it consolidates everything into this chat tab. So I've got like, regardless of what, wherever I'm broadcasting, all the chats get feed in through here. And if any comment comes in or, or a question, I can click on it and it'll highlight here. It'll show the icon of the channel it's in. It'll show the username of the person asking the question. And then for the person like Juan or, or anyone else, it's like they don't have to go like, where's that question? Because the chat could be going off the charts. They can cleanly see. So we've got Barbara with a question. It's on Facebook. And it's right there captioned. It's really nicely into the screen. And so it's a really nice way to kind of engage with the audience and and, and some of that stuff, it's a little bit uh, harder to, to do with it. Two other things really quickly on the caption screen. So basically on mine, I can just basically bump out, like when I welcome people onto the screen, it's nice to have like some extra captions and you can do like in the Q and A portion, you can bump it out. So you just got like some CTA, some stuff in there that you can do and you can program these per event or have like some. And then on the nice side of this, when we get into the graphics side is like, themes here you can have all the participants names displayed so if you ever watch like a news station or a sports channel you see the names of the people listed in their little like video camera boxes which you don't get on a lot of tools so you can have that checkbox you can put logos up here in the top right so you can put in the chapter name so you could be like cmx columbia cmx connect chapters you can do like overlays so if you get some fancier stuff here it'll pull in here where it's got that i'm not using that because it's just like the big blah 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 stuff and then you can do stuff like video countdown so i could just come in here click that right before the show starts and it's not working but right no but that's under, that's yeah. super cool like that you know you can sort of take all these multiple sources and basically create like a studio effect you can like live mix all these different cameras and sources of video together and then take it out to multiple sources I like that let me hide that. And then you've got like some video backgrounds and static backgrounds, and you can upload your own backgrounds and all that, all that great stuff. So basically for really theming your event, depending on the location or depending on the chapter, you've got some flexibility as far as that stuff goes. And then just everything you're using is out of the box. When you want to go live, you get the stuff up here. And so you've got just for basically 50 bucks a month, you know, and you time set out by how granular you want to get it because just it's like per admin and so you're you're basically treating every license like its own tv channel so it's basically like cnn usa versus like cnn europe versus cnn australia and really sort of be diligent for how you do that 
we give a quick training basically to any of your chapter leaders. And it's so, this thing's so basic that they're going to be able to run with it. And then there's going to be a little bit working with IT for, you're going to have to get set up for the channels, you know, just basically integrating it in with the channels. And it's all like just quick, you know, just signing in to the, the account, authorizing this as an app, all that great stuff. You can share your audio, video, screen, blah, blah, blah. You can store up to the videos here. It also archives to the channel. And then you can also go back after the fact, and I'll just show like one screenshot to end it out, where basically you can just do like micro content. So on one variety show that I do, I go back out and segment it out. And so basically there you just get like a nice screenshots and, you know, for really for no money at all, you've got, you know, something that looks basically really scrappy, really easy to use and pretty scalable for getting out and really helping to visually separate yourself out from everything else that's, that's going on, engage different um, audiences that you have out there for like social media instead of just pushing out like unsplash, it's big graphics to them on social media, really a, a way for them to, to get involved. And, and typically when I run the events, the interesting thing that I'm seeing is like, so I'll get people from like Uzbekistan, which is like why you see it like in a, in a browser tab, because I know I'll like forget that. I'll have people from Uzbekistan, Jordan. So I'll hit like North America, Europe and Asia, regardless when I'm doing it. So that's what's kind of fascinating. And you'll see kind of like basically three waves of your audience when you're doing these, right? So for the doctors, it, it kind of defies when you do the live stream events. One, the, the audience that's watching it when you're doing it. And then your biggest audience, at least what I'm seeing with a lot of the live stream events that we're doing, uh, the audience is developer software professionals. But most of the views is in the first 24 hours after the event. So people are treating it more like Netflix, right? So for... Usually like for chapter programs, you want people to attend and this, because of the last year and there's 5 billion webinars and virtual events now, it's like people may not want to watch it like right away or have a chance. And so now it's like for your chapter, you've got kind of like a very dynamic way for them to, they might've missed the event when it happened, but they're all watching it within the first 24 hours, right? And so that's where you're going to get a lot of the audience. And then your third is like where you can put the micro content and clips and put that out across the channels. And that can be a, like a really good like third wave of that content.